To the simplicity of the gospel brought to you by the Pegwell Community Church of Christ Church in Barbados. Tonight again, we are live on Facebook. Let your friends know and your family, those who are over and away, everywhere, let them know that we are not only on YouTube now, but we are also on Facebook. I want to welcome you to church. I'm glad that you're here. Every time you come, it makes me feel good. At least I know that you're interested in something that I have to say. It's good to see the young people in church. I'm glad that their parents are keeping them here. We want to continue to pray for them because uh, we want them to be brought up in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for your um, attendance this morning and for everything that you contributed to the service. We had a wonderful service this morning. Um, put the devil at bay. And uh, tonight again, we're here to talk to you about uh, walking in the victory that has already been provided for us. It doesn't seem as though we're walking in victory. We're walking with our heads down. We're walking with our hands down. And tonight, we noticed that I was ready for the scripture. I was wondering if the young lady was watching my notes. And that's my text tonight, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Thanks be unto God that giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has given us the victory. And so there are some things that we want to make sure that the devil does not rob us of. Tonight I'm going to be using three words and they're going to alternate. They mean about the same thing. So you're going to hear me talking about triumph. You're going to hear me talking about overcoming. You're going to hear me talking about victory. God wants you to walk as though you are victorious. You know the Bible said that the righteous are as bold as a lion. So when you're practicing righteousness, when you're living a righteous life, you're as bold as a lion. You are victorious. You are the king of the beasts. You are the king of the forest. You are, because you're walking in the light of God's word. So, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. So my whole purpose here tonight is to tell you that you've got to do um, what James, I think, said. James said, lift up those hands that hang down. We're walking with droopy shoulders. We're walking with our hands down. Uh, we're walking as we're just living hand to mouth. We're, we're walking as though we are one step out of the grave. And that's not good enough for us. We are a chosen generation. We are God's special people. So we got to lift up those hands that hang down. I think it's like the James or Jude. Lift up those hands that hang down. Make straight paths to your feet. Lest that which is weary be turned out of the way. How many of you can say amen? Amen. The Bible frequently addresses the, the, the theme of victory. The Bible talks a lot about victory. And when it comes to God's people, you're going to discover that we are already victorious. Although we're going to look tonight in the book of Revelation and see the Lord is saying to the children of Israel that you've got to do something to overcome. But this text, this text here tells us that we are given victory. Thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us read this here. Wherefore, lift up the hands that hang down. we droopy. And the feeble knees. we are just barely making it. And look what the Lord says. Make straight paths to your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but rather let it heal. Now let's read those two verses in the New Living Translation and see if we can get a better understanding. So take a new grip on your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. People, we've got a long way to go. We've got a battle to fight. We have got a devil to defeat. We've got young people that look, are looking to us. We've got a world that is looking to the church. So we've got to make out straight paths to our feet. And we've got to make sure that let the lame become strong. How many of you with me so far? God is the source of our victory. We are talking about being victorious. We are talking about being triumphant. We are talking about being overcomers. In Psalm 20 and verse 7, hear these words. Psalm 20 verse 7. It will say that some would trust in chariots and some will trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord because that is where our victory is. We will remember the word of the Lord. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, we have another scripture there which will tell us about, about, we, about we being conquerors. Let's begin at verse 35. I like 
some rhetorical questions here. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But listen to verse 37. No. All those seven things are so that I just read. In all these things we are what? Come and talk to me. All these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Let me reiterate again. It's time for us to walk in victory. It's time for us to look like we are victorious. It's time for us to behave as though we are victorious. Even in, even in the services, it is important for us to clap our hands and dance before the Lord and give the Lord a shout because that is what the Bible authorizes us to do. Amen? Amen. Now, let's, let's, read, some, let's read some verses. Those feeble knees. We used to sing a song that says, Why do we tremble when the Lord is our refuge? Remember that song? We walk as though we're going to fall. Listen to this, this guarantee of being an overcomer, victorious, triumphant. Don't forget, when you, know, when you are the overcomer, when you are triumphant, when you're victorious, you are the one, you are the one that is standing while your enemy is on the floor. And, and, and the, uh, the, the referee is counting one, two, three. Amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you're triumphant, when you're victorious, you are the one that's going to carry the, the, the crown. You are the one that's going to carry the, 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 the belt. And God wants us to live that kind of way. It does something to our psyche. It does. It does. Believe me. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 4, it says, For the Lord your God is he who goes before you, to fight for you against your enemy, to give you victory. That's what another translation says. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you victory, the NIV. God is fighting for us to give us the victory. God is fighting for us to give us the victory. So Father, we deliver this, this message into your hand. And that's that you will speak to the hearts of your people. Not necessarily to our heads, Lord, but Lord, impact our hearts tonight. Because we really want to be able to impact the world. We really want the world to look at us and see that we are victorious. We, re we really want the world to see and believe that you are who you are, that you supply our needs, that you are our provider, you are our protector. Lord, we don't want the world to come up with the conclusion that we say we are God's, but look at how, look at how God's people are. I ask this in Jesus' name. At one time, the question was asked of Israel in a sarcastic manner. But where are your gods? Where are your gods? We don't want anybody to ask that about us. So 1 Corinthians 5, 15 and 57, we just read that. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Is anybody going through some trouble now? Some defeat? It seemed as though the devil is winning. No, no, no. The devil is a liar. The devil is trying to fool you. It could be a battle with your health. It could be a battle with your finances. It could be a battle with your marriage. It could be a battle with your family. It could be a battle with your prayer life, your prayer's life, your spiritual life. It could be a battle, a battle that you can't get in your prayer room. You can't get there and the devil won't tell you. See, you're not a child of God. God doesn't do that to his children. But the devil is a liar. I want to guarantee you tonight that you, are, you already have the victory. Thanks be unto God who giveth us, giveth, E-T-H at the end of give is a present continuous. Thanks be unto God who gives us or who is giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't realize that you're getting victory, you get depressed and discouraged. You get suicidal and despondent. All sorts of things happen to you when you think that you are fighting a battle that you can't win. And that's what God is trying to get, get, 
That's what the devil is trying to go, get God's people to believe today. That they're fighting a battle that they can't win. Every time you go back to the doctor, the sugar is high. Blood pressure is high. A1C is high. Everything seems to be going wrong. And you, you, you can reach the place where you, where you say, what's wrong with me? Something must be wrong with me. But the devil is a liar. This, this text that we just had said that the Lord goes with us. He is going to fight for us to give us the victory. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. John chapter 16 and verse 33. I have said these things to you that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Pegwell Community Church is not a church that's going to tell you when you come to know the Lord, everything is going to be fine and dandy. No. Nope. We will tell you that all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. We will tell you that weeping will endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. So, first, uh, I'm reading John 16, 33. I've said this thing unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world, you're going to have some trouble. Get used to it. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world, Jesus said. And there's another text where it says, because I overcame, you too shall overcome. Maybe it's the next verse, I don't know. These things have I spoken unto you, let me reiterate, that in me you might have peace. In the world, you're going to have trouble. Anybody going through troubles? Man, I'm always going through troubles, but who cares? You don't have to worry because the Lord already told you. Stop worrying about it. Um, even uh, to him... <laughs> Uh, that's not the one I want yet, but uh, the, the previous one I was reading. Anyhow, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The other word, verse I was looking for is the one which says, and because I overcome, you too shall overcome. Maybe there's somebody there in the world I'm speaking the way the Lord wanted me to go on today. I don't know. I could have gone on four years ago, two years ago, three years ago, but maybe somebody's up there with a, 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 a gun in their mouth, just ready to pull the trigger. And God is saying, I have already given you the victory. The devil is a liar. Psalm 108, verse 13. With God, we shall do valiantly. We are not going under for anything. The church is not going under because the Lord said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. It did not say it will not assail. It said it will not prevail. Yeah, it will always be a sale. There are always those who want to uh, destroy the church and break up the church. This happened from way back when. But the Lord said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of God. We are victorious. We are triumphant in the name of Jesus. So through God, now don't get arrogant to think it is you. Through God, we shall do valiantly. Through God, we shall do valiantly. I hope I'm building your faith tonight. That's what I want to do. Hope I'm building your faith. Through God, we shall do valiantly. For he it is that shall tread down our enemies. God is going to take down our enemies for us. A psalm writer said, had it not been for the Lord on my side, the enemy would have swallowed me up. But when you have God on your side, you're victorious, you're triumphant, you're more than a conqueror, you are an overcomer. And like, like, like David said, I love this scripture. I think my wife hates this too. I hear it very often, you know, well, not very often, but sometimes, that I could, I could run through a truth and leap over a wall. That's how you ought to be feeling all the time with the pain and the, the headache and the back pain and all that. You ought to be feeling, i stay here with this one for a little while. You, you ought to be feeling that way. Man, I feel like I, I feel like I could run through a troop. I could leap over a wall. Or you ought to be like Caleb, who at 85 years old, when they were distributing the land after Joshua had taken the people into the children of, into the land and they were distributing, Caleb said, give me this mountain. For I am as strong now at 85 as I was 40 years ago at 45. That's what God wants you to be. But we walk around like, anybody remember Lippy the Lion? And, and those are, they walk around with long ears, drop down. I remember there was a fella 
who used to advertise um, quick, quick, quick drink. A quick drink. He used to go slurp. And he used to have his. Anybody know who I'm talking about? And, and, and we, we, we are walking around like, we are, that's a bad example to unbelievers. If that's the God that you serve and you, and you can't be any better, I, I don't want to be with him. Huh? Look at the other scripture, though, that we were just given. Had it not been for the Lord on our side, no, may Israel say. Verse 2. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed up quickly. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The streams had gone over our soul. And then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Had it not been for the Lord on our side. But somewhere down there, oh, it's right there. But blessed is the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Thank God that we are victorious through Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor I'm victorious. Tell the one on the other side, are you? Are you? Are you? Blessed be the Lord who has not given us to the prayer to, to the teeth of the adversary. God is so good. God is so good. Let's read some more scriptures. I'm telling you that you are already victorious. You are not only a conqueror, but you are more than a conqueror. All right? James chapter 1. In fact, before we go there, oh yeah, I, I want to see that one, that scripture where the Bible says that, that we could run through a troop and leap over a wall. Brethren, I'm not trying to boast because nobody knows what the future holds. But in 38 years, you see me at this church, you never see me walk with my shoulders bent. And I'm disgusted and disappointed and dejected and suicidal. I'm complaining, I'm murmuring. No, 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 no. That's not a place for me. And that's not the place for you. And if you are in this stage, no, I can understand why you're there. Because the devil is really, really at you. The devil is really at you. When you look at your life, you sometimes ask yourself if you are saved. Because of the works of the devil. But thanks be unto God, our text says, who giveth us, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. For by thee, by God, all this comes through God, brethren. When you walk with the Lord in the light of his word, oh, what glory he sheds on this way and, the, and the way. When we do his goodwill, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. We are doing these things through God. For by thee have I run through a troop. Man, look, if you depend on human beings to help you to run through a troop, you're going to die. If you trust in the arm of flesh for things like this, you're going to die. But through thee, I run through a troop. They have, they have their swords and their spears, and they have their battle axes, and they have their, their guard, they have everything. But, but through the Lord, I'm able to run through that. Through the Lord, I'm able to run, run through all of that. Glory to God. I'm saying something here now for the first time. I, I, we all, I always say, for by thee, I can run through a troop. But tell me what it says up there. It says I have. I have. For by thee, I have run through a troop. And by my God, have I leapt over a wall. That calls for energy. That calls for determination. I'm saying there's somebody here tonight, you are done and depressed. You feel like you can't make it. I don't know about you, giving up is not an option. And while I try to make it to the kingdom of God, I've got to help somebody else because people need the Lord. So, so many people are depending on you. The Lord is saying to you tonight, buckle up, buckle on your shoes, let's get running. The Lord is telling you, prepare for war. The Lord is saying, let the mighty men come out like we read. We're going to read that again in, in the New Living Translation of Joel chapter 3, begin at verse 9. But this time we're going to read it in the New Living Translation and see what God is saying to you. If you've got to be a soldier, have you ever seen a soldier walking with, with, with his backpack and he's barely making it? Huh? No, no, no. Huh? Get, you've got to get ready for war. Be hit. You know, now we're talking about that. This girl that ran for Barbados that everybody complimented. 
She had me so vexed. She was running the 400 meters or whatever. She came third or fourth, I can't remember. We can't call any names on like how we online now. But when they interviewed her at the end, you know what she said? She said she expected the person that won to win. You didn't get what I said yet? You going, in a, you, you going to run a race and you expecting somebody else to, run, to win? What sort of effort are you going to put up if you expected that? Huh? So get ready for war. Best warriors I'm calling you out tonight. You got to be strong. I like to, watch, I like to watch these soldiers in battle. I'm, I'm watching Israel all the time and what's happening up there. I see soldiers with these big boats that I can't even lift up. But if you don't walk in those boats, you, you, you can't go across the terrain that is there. I see them with this big backpack and this big gun that must be 200 pounds and this big helmet. That's what's going to save their lives. And they've got to be strong. They've got to go with the mind of being victorious. They have to go with the attitude that I'm triumphant. I'm already a winner. Let me give you another scripture. James chapter 1, verse, begin at verse 12. It will say, blessed is the man who remains steadfast on the trial. You remain steadfast on the trial because you're strong. Nobody is going to defeat me. I'm not going to give you the time of day if you try to. Because my objective is to make heaven my home. I'm not going to let you rent any space in my head. I'm not going to let you come in my life for two minutes and upset me. Never. No, no, no. Blessed is the man that remains steadfast on the trial. And trial is going to come all the time. But through God, you can remain steadfast on the trial. For when he has stood the test. Anybody getting anything out of this so far? When he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. Which God has promised to those that love him. Are you expecting the crown of life? There are seven crowns that are available for the child of God at the end of his journey. And there's only one that I don't want. I, Lord, you keep that one. I don't want that one. That one is the martyr's crown. The martyr's crown means that you have to get your head chopped off. Or be burned in fire. Burned alive. Something like that. Because you become a martyr. But I want the others. The other crowns that God has. So when you remain steadfast on the trial, because God has empowered you and anointed you, huh, you will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those that love him. Um, let's go on to another one. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to begin at verse 9. There is no excuse for us to be in a prolonged state of discouragement and depression. There's no excuse for us to be in a prolonged state of sin. I know people who've been living in the same sin constantly for, for over 30 years. With absolutely no change whatsoever. I didn't say I heard or I believe I said I know. That's totally unacceptable. You want to go to God's house? You want to see God's face? And before you see his face, do you want to help anybody along the journey? Are you interested in helping anybody along the journey? Well, you've got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You'll find that in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, but we're not going there right now. Let's read this. Jesus said unto Paul, when Paul said he had a thorn in his flesh. Man, who doesn't have a thorn in their flesh? You know anybody who doesn't have a thorn in their flesh? I'm speaking now in a way that you can understand. I'm not talking about a regular thorn. Your thorn in your flesh could be finances. You don't even have money to send the children to school tomorrow. Your thorn in your flesh could be something that you expect the doctor to say that's not nice. What is your thorn in the flesh? Your thorn in the flesh could be your pastor that tells you you don't want to hear. Well, I can be a thorn for a long time. Thorn in the flesh. So Paul sought the Lord to relieve him of that thorn, brethren. God does not always relieve you of the thorn in the flesh, but he gives you enough grace to go through it. Could I hear amen? He does not always relieve you of the thorn in the flesh. Look what he said. Paul, you're asking me to relieve you of this thorn in the flesh, but my grace is sufficient for you. Whatever you're going through, God's grace is sufficient for you. Huh? For my strength is rarely seen when you are weak. 
Because when you are strong, you don't need me. But when you are weak, then my strength is manifest. Can somebody say amen? My strength is made perfect in weakness. So Paul said, well, if that is so, let me be weak all the time. There's a translation of the latter part of that verse. If your strength is made perfect in my weakness, well, let me be weak all the time. I was thinking about this today when I was sitting at home, and I was thinking you've got to be careful with preachers who have a sweet tongue. Preachers who are, are, are orators, their oratorial skill will get you, wow, listen to him, wow. But you know, in his own strength, he doesn't make the impact as a man who um, don't know the Bible so well, but got to depend on the Lord. I remember the story told of a man who traveled 100 miles one Sunday to go to preach at the church. When he got there, he didn't have his notes. And he was so stupid to say to the congregation, well, you got to bear with me this morning because I got to depend on the Holy Ghost, but when I come back tonight, I'll bring back the notes. You hear how stupid that is? You got to bear with me. This morning is not so good because I got to depend on the Holy Ghost. No, no, that's not how it ought to be. That's not how it ought to be. My most gladly, therefore, Will I glory in my affirmities? Most gladly, therefore, will I keep this thorn. I'll keep this thorn in the flesh. I'll keep this thorn in the flesh. Some of you run to the divorce court as soon as you get the thorn in the flesh. Some of you run all sorts of places as, as soon as you get thorn in the flesh. Man, if, if God's strength is made perfect and, and your weakness, keep the thorn in your flesh because God said, my grace is going to keep your life. My grace is sufficient for you. Most gladly, therefore, he said, I will rather glory in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. We like this easy, 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 easy street uh, Christianity. We don't want to glory in infirmities. Who want infirmities? We want to be healed. I was just reading a survey uh, done by the Pew, Pew Project people. And they say uh, the most prayers that are asked for in church are from people who either want a financial blessing or healing. Most prayers in the church, financial blessing or healing. Nobody asks for spiritual depths too often. Nobody asks that God will remove the scales from their eyes so that they will see. Nobody asks that the, uh, uh, the, the scripture where it says, the entrance of your word gives light. Nobody asks God to do that. So the deeper things of life, people are not asking for. We, don't, we are not interested in infirmities. We want to get rid of the healing, I mean, the, the sickness and the disease. Hey, welcome to the church. Let's go a little bit further than that. My grace is sufficient. Whatever you're going through tonight, take heart. Take courage. Whatever you're going through, God is for you. I want to go back to Romans chapter 8. I want to go back to verse 35. And I want to read this one more time. But this time either in the NIV or in the NLT. The NLT is the one that I pro 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 uh, This is the NLT. Because you may be going through some of these things here. Are, are you listening? Uh, don't fall asleep. The, the next thing that's good was really long because we had a lot of singing, dancing, and whatever. It's not too long. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? That is a, a, a question that the people who believe in want save, always save, they use that. Let me tell you what that means. Because God is love, nobody could ever separate you from God's love. He will always love you, but you can separate yourself from it. Anybody understand what I just said? You could walk away. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry? I'm using this because some of these might be in your life. Or destitute, which means poor, poor, or in danger, or threatened with death. Does it mean God doesn't love you? Look, look at the next verse. Verse 36 is going to continue. As the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day and we are being slaughtered like sheep. But I like verse 37. No. Despite all these things, all those things you're going through, people talk your name, people lie on you, people slander you, people backbite, people are bitter and angry and whatever. Well, of course, they don't realize they're affecting themselves. They're not even affecting you because you don't even know that they're in that nasty condition. Huh? But no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. Everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. You exercise faith in the plans that God has for you. And you are going to be an overcomer. You're going to, be, you're going to wax valiant in the fight. The Bible speaks about those in Hebrews chapter 11 who wax valiant in the fight. They were overcomers. Women had their, their, their dead people raised from the dead. And other people who, who wax valiant in the fight. Now I'm going to go to that verse in Hebrews chapter 11. Because I want to tell you as of tonight, you got to keep fighting man. Things are getting worse in this world. And nobody cares about you. Nobody's here to make you happy. You got to fight your own fight even unto death. Nobody's fighting for you. The Bible speaks of those who are overcomers in the book of Revelation, in the book of, uh, in the book of Hebrews. And he talked about those who quench the violence of fire. Who are those? Who are those who quench the violence of fire? Anybody? The three Hebrew boys. They were valiant. They, were over, they had this overcoming spirit. So they said to the king, I don't care how hot you heat that, 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 that uh, place. We, we're, not, we're not going in there. So by faith, they overcame. By faith, they were victorious. By faith, they were triumphant. Because our text says, everyone who has born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Without faith, you're not going to be an overcomer. So through faith, they quenched the violence of fire. They're those who escape the edge of the sword. They're those who out of weakness were made strong. Listen to me if you're going through anything like this. In your weakness now you can be made strong. They're those who became, who waxed valiant in the fight. They became victorious in the fight. They didn't cower and give up and go under. They waxed valiant in the fight. There are others who turned to flight. The armies of the aliens, when the aliens were coming, they were triumphant. They ter You'll find this in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. When three armies were coming against the children of Israel, the Lord said, you don't have to fight in this battle. Just get two choirs to go ahead of me and sing. And as they began to sing and to praise, the Lord turned to flight the armies of the aliens. And those three armies destroyed themselves. No matter what you go through, there's something in the Bible to help you. There's something in the word of God to help you. You don't have to be depressed and discouraged and dejected. You don't have to be suicidal. You don't have to be like that. And God is not expecting you to be like that. Let me give you a few more scriptures and I'm going to stop. Deuteronomy chapter 24, we read that already. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13. You're going to walk in this victory. Put on the whole armor of God. There's sometimes in order to be an overcomer, there's some things that you have to do. In this case of 1 Corinthians that we just read, 15, it says, thanks be unto God who gives us the victory. Who helps us to be overcomers. But there's some areas where you have to do something. Like this one. You've got to put on the whole armor of God. You're in a battle, God has given you an armor. That you could be victorious and triumphant. If you go to battle without your armor, what do you think is going to happen? So the Lord said, take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. James uh, chapter 1. Verse 1 to 5. We are talking about being overcomers. Some of you are depressed. Some of you are going through some hard places. Some of you have been going through these hard places for a long time. I don't know. I noticed that as they were singing tonight, they sang about victory. About two songs had something about victory. Uh, James, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's really important, but I, I can't take time to go through this, but I want to draw it to your attention. You know, there's some people who respect family as leaders and some who don't. You see that fellow James there? You know he's Jesus' brother. You know he's the brother of Jesus. But he ain't going down that road. He said, I'm a servant. He knows submission. He knows his place. He knows his side of the track. 
And he could have said, just like he said, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. He could have said, the brother of Jesus Christ. Some of us in that humble. He said, he's writing to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Verse 2. My brethren, listen to this. Are you hearing me tonight? My brethren, come to the all joy when you fall into various temptations. Huh? James, you right there, or there's a mistranslation. I'm supposed to count it all joy when I fall into various temptations? Yes. Oh, you don't want to be tempted. The Lord said when you're tempted, you should come to all joy. This, this way. Verse, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, what you're going through now might just be a trying of your faith. Huh? Whatever the situation is, might be a trend of your faith. Isn't there to kill you? It's an 11 plus exam. It's trying to test it to see how much you know. It's not there to kill you. The trend of your faith works patience. Another word for patience is endurance. But you've got to let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, wanting nothing. That verse makes a lot of sense. So think it's not strange when you go through various temptations. Temptation is not sin. It's only when you yield to the temptation that is sin. It's only when you give in to the temptation that is sin. So we hear, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. A uh, few more scriptures. Psalm 3 and verse 8. From the Lord comes deliverance. Psalm 3 and verse 8. Salvation belongs to the Lord. I think it is in the, the NIV where it says, from the Lord comes deliverance. God is here to deliver. We're going to pray one for another tonight. Just two or three minutes. Huh? We're going to ask God to deliver my brother, deliver my sister. That's what the church is all about. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to do a number of things, including bringing deliverance to the captive. Some people might need to be delivered tonight. Some persons have demons hiding in them that I'm praying that they will act up. Because somebody has demons pl playing the possum. And we need to get those demons out of the way. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing, Lord, be upon your people. But from the Lord comes deliverance. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. We read this already, but we're going to read it again. What then shall we say in response to these things? I think that's still the NIV. If God be for us, anybody can fight against you. Are you understand what I'm saying? You, you know people are still so stupid that they know that God is for you, but they're still fighting against you? Huh? The Bible said, if God be for us, who can be against us? You don't even have to fight the battle yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of God. You don't always have to fight your battles. Huh? If God be for us, who shall be against us? But verse 32 is interesting. Verse 32. He that spared not his own son Jesus, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him, with Jesus, in addition to him, also freely give us all things, including victory, triumph. He gave the best already, his son. Anything else now is second best. How do we expect not God not to do that? Uh, wrote Joshua 10 and verse 8. The Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. Somebody said the Lord, pastor changed your name to Joshua. It was, my name was Joshua a long time ago. Joshua. Joshua, be not afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them shall be able to withstand you. Let's read it. Everybody read the Lord said to Joshua. Uh, take out Joshua. Then you read and put in the word me, the pronoun me. So read it loudly so that we can get you on the tape. The Lord said, the Lord said to me, do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to, to withstand you. 
you're going to be victorious over them. You're going to be a conqueror. You're going to be triumphant. Amen? No matter how they come against you and try to get you to lose your job. Amen? They want you to lose your job. They have your job laying up for one of their friends and all that. No matter what they do, next door they have all the water running in the yard from the pig pen and all kind of stuff. All these nasty things they're doing unto you. But don't be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. If the Lord said, I have given them, Numbers 23, 19 said, God is not a man that he should lie. If God said, I've given them into your hand, you could walk all over their necks. You could put your foot all over their necks. Are you hearing me tonight? We are victorious, man. We are more than conquerors. Proverbs 21, 31. The horse is made ready for the day of battle. And you think you have the horse, you're okay. But the second part of the verse says, but victory rests with the Lord. Without turning to any verses, let me tell you 10 things here. Huh? You want to be victorious? You want to live in victory? That's what we're talking about tonight. Can you put a thumbnail? Let me see what it is. You want to live in victory? Walk in victory? <laughs> you want to walk in victory? There's some things that you have to do. Number one, the Lord is going to let the wall fall for you, but you're going to walk around the wall. You hear what you got to do? Sometimes not always you sit back in bed and relax and victory is going to come. No, 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 no. Did we sing a song that says victory belongs to Jesus or victory is Jesus or something like that? Yeah. I didn't know they were going to sing that. And it's a new song too. Huh? Listen, God is going to give you some fish, but you got to cast out the nets. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah? God is going to give you vision, but you got to go to your pool of Siloam and wash the dirt off your face. The Lord said, go wash. And the man went and washed, came back victorious. God gave me sight. Huh? You want to be healed from some sickness or disease? You might go, go dip in, you have to go dip in the pool. When Naaman was sent to dip in the pool, he said, not me. That pool too dirty. Where I live, we have pools that are cleaner. I'm not going to go. Somebody had to go outside this foolish man and say, if the man of God had told you to do something great, you would have gone. But all he asked you to do was go and dip in the pool. So Nehemiah collected his senses, went to the pool and started to dip one time, nothing. Two times, nothing. And I believe if you saw him at that stage, you could see smoke coming through his ears. I know you should not do this. I know you should not do this. Six times, nothing. But the seventh time he went down, when he came up, his skin was as smooth as a newborn baby. God is going to make things smooth for you. But you've got to go and dip as many times as the Lord said dip. If he said come to church, come. If he said pray, come. If he said fast, fast. you got to do something. Amen. You want to see your brother Lazarus alive? You want to see something happen in your family? Somebody got to move the stone. If the stone is not moved, nothing's going to happen. Somebody got to move the stone. Is there sickness? Somebody got to stretch out their hand. That man would not have experienced victory until he had stretched out his hand. The Lord said he was in church and he had this hand that couldn't move. And the Lord Jesus said to him, stretch forth your hand. He could be stubborn. Sometimes in this church, all we ask you to do is lift your hands. Sometimes in this church, all we ask you to do is come forward a little bit more. Sometimes all we ask you to do is sit down together and that is a major thing for you. And sometimes you wonder why you're not having the victory like this fellow. You want to see a miracle? You want to see your cupboards full? You want to see your bank account full? Fill up the water pots. Fill up the water pots. And I deliberately stopped there because I hope that you would have finished it. We want to half do things. The Bible said, fill the water pots up to the brim. There must be a reason why he said it to the brim. Well, I can pray and fast, but I could only do two hours. And that's two hours after I have my lunch. Huh? I can't this, I can't that. Listen, if you're going to do something, do it to com Do it to completion. Fill the water pots up to the brim. You want to see your finances prosper, your house prosper? Man, the Lord told this lady, go and borrow some vessels and borrow a lot. Anybody hear me? There are times that you have to do something to make sure that your victory comes. 
And the final one that I have here is uh, someday God look after the man of God. Someday God look after the man of God. This is one man of God in this house that we don't ask you to do things like that. And because I'm going on Facebook for the first time and more people can listen to me, let me slip this in. That sometimes you, die, you guys do too much for the pastor. You have a pastor and 20, 20 workers in the church. And every year you could only have a, a Thanksgiving service for the pastor. Not a word, not a quote for the people that come here and keep these doors going. Uh, these people that clean the church and go and knock on doors and all that. And every year you have an appreciation service for the pastor and all the other workers that you have in church. They'll be here for 20 years and never even get a pack of mints. Why are you doing that for the pastor? Who is he paying his salary? And just like we have to go to the supermarket and buy stuff, let him go to the supermarket and buy stuff as well. How many understand what I'm saying? I'm just losing, so okay. That, that, is, that is what I have to say on that. It says you maybe hear somebody responding to that, but I don't think it is really good. God wants you to live here and walk in victory. Let's stand. This has been the presentation of the Pegwell Community Church of Pegwell Boggs in Christchurch, Barbados. It is called the Simplicity of the Gospel. I'm Pastor Lester Morrill. Let's, let's lift our hands before the Lord. If you do not have a local assembly, feel free to join us for an exhilarating time of worship. Our services are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Sunday evening, healing and deliverance at 6.30 p.m. Join us in prayer on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and for Bible study on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Bless fellowship and enjoy. The simplicity of the gospel.